you know, there is the other thing called a style guide, and this is what every book publisher uses. And every book publisher pretty much kind of writes their own style guide. And a style guide is nothing more than a set of rules by which they edit and publish a book. And since no two publishers are exactly the same, because they print books based upon the clientele or the the subject matter, genre, if you will, that works best. And oftentimes, book publishers are looking for authors who pretty much tell stories in the manner to which they're familiar with. Again, even within even within certain genres. So book publishers are very nitpicky to a certain extent when they're looking for somebody. So oftentimes, my first question, and if you're looking for an editor, the first question that editor better ask you is, if you're going use a traditional book publisher, who are you looking to send your, your manuscript to? Because it's going to make a whole lot of difference. This is where people get, shall I say, disillusioned. Oh, I had some guy, you know, edit this book for, you know, whatever. Uh, Chicago Manual uh, style guide and all of that. And there, But that's not what that particular publisher wants. In other words, the better off, and I your 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 product is is edited the better your chances of getting accepted by that particular book publisher know in other words know your book publisher what is their style guide and oftentimes most of them are a little bit stingy they don't want to, you know that information getting out because there are other book publishers who are pretty anxious sometimes to know what their competitors are using as far as the style guide is concerned, and they have no problem trying to mimic it and match you up and take customers away from you. So it's still a dog-eat-dog world in the book publishing industry. Not everybody is willing to share that style guide information. Now, a good editor will know those folks, and oftentimes they'll share it. And I've had some of the big publishers nowadays, and fortunately, it's gotten easier because uh, this outfit LinkedIn, a lot of these editors from all of these different big publishing houses, it's all the way down to the smaller ones. Once they see who you are and they can see you out on LinkedIn, uh, then they can pretty much say, yeah, I think I can trust this person and, and give them a little heads up and say, okay, especially if you've got a story or a client that's got a story that will fit them. And I use the, also the analogy like a lock and a key. The more your book or your story fits that publisher like a key, you have a better chance of unlocking them and getting your story published. Self, you know, uh, self-publishing is a slightly different story. You, you really still need to do one thing, be a good storyteller. But then in the end, you're the one that's going to have to go out and do all of the promoting. You wear so many hats. You're going to have to find the book publisher. You're going to have to find the distributor, which, you know, and, and, and do all that legwork that traditionally a, a book publisher would do for you. Yeah, I worked back in the day when after working for the government and drove a big truck, I got to go around to a lot of publishers and distributors, and they were really concerned because – it was the late 80s, early 90s, and people were about trees and not killing trees, and it was hurting all the book publishers. But then I went through the time in the late 90s, 98, 2003, where, oh, man, so many of the magazine newspapers had gone under, and we didn't know if there was going to be anything like newspapers and magazines anymore. And lo and behold, when I was learning to be a publisher myself, I got off the road, and I had to at least do 12. There was Oh, lightning source and all kind of different in between. They weren't Vandy Press and they weren't like major publishing companies. And there was already a Morris Publishing doing recipes, so I became TJ Morris Publishing. But when I was driving a big truck and going and pick up these things, they were always just concerned. They were laying off people. It didn't matter whether it was the rolls of paper or the ones going to the magazines or the printers. I even worked in a printing company, was a catcher, and I learned to bind books and. I learned everything about printing you could possibly imagine, and from business cards to the font styles to putting the books together, you know, the type and the weight and everything you can imagine detailed 
Uh, the only thing part I never did, and I, although I loved the artwork, you know, so I, but I do respect graphic artists. And uh, I got through the Amazon phase. I had just gone through uh, producing music and uh, music as well about the same time, Napster, and we had, uh, it was terrible because we were all going to the Internet with our music and our books, and I was both. I was a creator, so I wanted to create music and write music. But it got to be where once I put 85000 in one project alone, for my own personal music as a uh, songwriter. Then I got DVD started taking around Nashville. You can't get them played, you know, and I learned even through, uh, I was producing them through the Sony company, one of its derivatives and distributors in Nashville. So I got on and learned about CD Baby and different, you know, I had to, if I read, if I sung something that somebody else owned, you know, you have to pay them the rights to the union. And same thing with musicians. I was married to musicians, so learned to respect intellectual property. But even after I did all that, I wound up watching, who was it, Steve Jobs take it where the money, and you can't even get a dollar for your your songs or $10 for 10 on the side of a DVD or, C, you know, back then. So same thing with publishing. And then all of a sudden Jeff, Jeff Bezos comes in with Amazon, you know, here I am. I, I was always a day late and a dollar short, folks, with cyberspace business or the Internet business worldwide, getting in on a decent level, thinking I was doing the right thing because that's what I wanted to do. But you can lose your shirt going, you know, from the money you think you're invested in a great thing, but it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game, right? But anyway, after uh, learning about, you know, how we were going to do it, it got down to Okay, I still want to make music. I can use Pro Tools on my computer at home, and I still want to write books, so I can use Amazon, and they had Create Space, and then they just recently, in the last two or three years, they went with Kindle, and now I get foreigners talking to me. I can't understand just trying to self-produce on Kindle. So I did learn, though, it's a good thing to try to sell your own books as a independent, which is what I am working with now is a lot of independents because – if you can get so many thousands, then you may get somebody interested, but just going direct to your, a big publisher. The big publishers were upset, they felt like, with Amazon. That's a long story if you know the history about print-on-demand books. So, you know, we got where we didn't want to keep them in distributors home, um, on the shelves. It was too costly, and we didn't want to keep them in our garages anymore. And so, uh, I mean, there's a few people that still do. They're old timers. They'll usually be over 45 years old. But uh, most of the people today, they are putting their own ideas. And that's the trick, I think, is keeping you alive, is about being alive and staying alive and finding something that you're creating. My dog, I'll have to go shut her up. But talk a, a little bit about, you know, what we can do if you don't mind, or how you see you and me, because we do have cell phones, we do have computers, we are working at home, and people can charge whatever they want. But give people an idea, if with an association like ours of people that want to work from their homes, how do you see people coming together and networking? How does that help? Have you got any ideas? Well, the biggest uh, thing that happens is really is, the internet and there's just becoming more and more and more uh you know platforms it started out with facebook you've got linkedin uh oh gosh <laughs> there's just more and more that are coming along every day because each one has something different um you've got twitter and you know and so on where again it, you're limited in in what each one of these, you know, services and platforms provide. And from there, it's just a matter of also what works for you or how you get something, you know, which platform, you know, tends to work the best for you. You've got Pinterest, you know, which is more graphics. It's more about pictures and things of that nature. And you go, oh, yeah, you know, there's some great ideas that, you know, that can be had there as well. And it just goes on and on and on of, you know, where you want to go. The best thing, again, is to pick one, settle in, learn about it, and see if it really suits 
what you're doing in terms of what product is it that you're creating and that you're trying to sell. Well, you help people get their own. I believe we, how can I say this? Let me go back to my dying mother because she all she ever wanted to do was write. And she wrote for romance and things that were selling, and she was embarrassed about it. Wouldn't let us kids look at it, paranormal or, or modern romance. When I was a kid, I guess they were, in her mind, were close to being those tabloids at checkout counters or magazines. But, you know, she she made a decent living. But she wrote for the newspaper in Texas Monthly and would get special assignments, they called them back then. She may make 50 a 375 for one, but not much, you know. Yeah. But uh, anyway, nowadays people are working from their home to help people get their stories. And my mother said, You are the author of your own life story. Now, how many people do you help get their stories out? And how do they find you? Are you advertising? Locally on radio or TV or billboards or newspaper uh, ads or how do you advertise or do you strictly use the internet? I strictly use, for the most part, the internet and primarily my website, as far as that goes, mainly uh, industrial documents. But I also co-chair a editing and writing class or workshop, I should say. Uh, through a public library near me. And the group meets once a month. And from that group, you know, people come and go in and out of these groups. And from there, somebody will sit down and say, okay, fine. And I look at, you know, when the, the writing, we teach them, you know, we go through vocabulary, we go through structure, we go through, you know, just about everything. And out of that, People will come and say, well, how do I write a memoir? How do I write, you know, uh, young adult and science fiction and all of that? And one of the things that I keep telling them is it, it's still it, – it's all about story. You have to have a good story. You have to be able to carry that reader so that they want to turn to the next page. They finish one, they go to the next, and they go to the next, and they go to the next – and it takes really very consistent storytelling. You don't want to wander off the reservation and go into something else. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, where was I? That's the end of, you know, uh, a good story sometimes. Sometimes people want to say, well, how do I, how do I write my memoir? And there are better ways and there are worse ways to write uh, a memoir. I mean, it's your story. It's your life. You should know how you lived it for the most part. So here again becomes, uh, you know, what avenues do you go down as far as writing your story? But you still have to be one thing, a storyteller. And you have to be able to hold that reader's attention. One of the things I ask people, you know, I said, you, you know who makes the best editors? And the answer is one thing, people who hate to read. Because if you can't hold the attention of somebody who hates to read, then you're probably not going to hold the interest of 90% of the readers anyway. So that's one of the things that makes me such a good editor. I hate to read. You have to capture my attention and then hold it. And it has to be done with a good story. Oftentimes, you know, people will put in, pounds and pounds of fluff into their story to try and make it look pretty, sound pretty, whatever. But it gets cut from there and down to the bare bones in some cases. A publisher has to like your story enough to put time and effort into going through the rounds of editing to get a polished product before they take it to a printing company and then go out and distribute it to bookstores and whatever and hopefully, you know, you're lucky, you know, if you sell, you know, be a, a blockbuster book. And well, it's always the same thing. A real life experience of the author. Now, as people write uh, autobiography, 
that's usually chronologically uh, growing up, I guess. 